Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, now let us come back to the continuation of this scheme. Now, what we have seen in the previous lecture that so I have to we have to compute the position x i n plus one as explicitly, and u i n plus one also we compute explicitly, and s i n plus one is also we compute explicitly. So this is again this is again hyperbolic equation. So here, this computation of derivative we have to do in the opint manner because if we do any central difference, then we will again have the oscillation. The solution will blow up. Therefore, we have to approximate this derivative in the first order derivative with the opinding method. So it means again sorting the particle depending upon the the sign of the velocity, either it is a left or it is a right. So this is the upwinding, and then once we have that, then we can do the time uh, time loop. Yeah, and now the question was that. So anyway, we have already seen in our earlier lecture the initial condition. You apply at n is equal to zero, then you get x one x i of i one u i of one, but when you apply the boundary condition, so for the velocity, if it is zero, it is fine. So after you compute the new velocity, you just put explicitly u is equal to zero. Yeah. But here, what do you have on the boundary? You have the boundary not h is equal to zero, but you have on the boundary it's del h derivative of h with respect to x is equal to zero on the left, as well as on the right. Yeah. Because n is equal to minus one, it doesn't matter because right hand side is zero. Therefore, del s by del x is also zero. Yeah. So this minus sign goes to the right hand side, which is zero. Now, I want to somehow integrate, or I want to put this del s by del x into our computation of the derivative. So here. Equations are also hyperbolic. So you can look that for the looking the hyperbolic, you look the eigenvalues of that matrix that I have put in the beginning, and then just uh, looking at the eigenvalues, you see that whether they are all real or or the imaginary. Based on that, you can find. Whether it is hyperbolic or parabolic, so this is a first-order system, and this is the hyperbolic type. So I didn't go into detail of that classification of the the system of uh, PDE. So this is just I'm just giving you the impression or giving you the example. How do you solve the system with our method? Yeah. So it is not. I'm not going to give the detailed introduction of uh, all this system of uh, Equations or type of uh, equations. So now this is again the uh, hyperbolic. It means we have to we have to approximate del u by del x and del h n by del x with. Upwind method. After just you look the sign, whether it is positive, you take the backward the the neighbors on the left. If it is negative, you take the neighbors from the right, 
and based on that we approximate. Now how to implement how to implement the boundary conditions, Neumann boundary condition. Yeah. So this is this is a boundary condition, this is called the Neumann boundary condition. Yeah. So this this one is called Dirichlet boundary condition. Boundary condition. This one is called Neumann boundary condition. Yeah. So there are two types. So if you give the value at the boundary explicitly, that is called Dirichlet boundary condition. If you give the value on the boundary with respect to the derivative of n, then that is called the Neumann boundary condition. Sometimes you get also mixed boundary condition. So the the mix means Dirichlet plus the Neumann. Somewhere Dirichlet, somewhere Neumann, or you can give some type of Robbins boundary condition. So that we'll have maybe in some examples now this is not coming to our example. So how to implement the Neumann boundary condition. So remember that now when we approximate the derivative, yeah. So remember that to to approximate tail h y del x at every point i, we use Taylor's approximation. So this was uh, done always in our earlier lecture. So it means our h i h i of j. So never, yeah. All the never you just do the Taylor expansion around is i plus x i j minus s i delt s by del x plus e j. So e of x i j j is one to m. Okay. This was our Taylor expansion j equation one unknown. And now what I want, so I want to write, so now that I just give that it is, so it is lecture 33, but just now I just give now it is this equation as 33. So now this is now 33.1. Yeah. So boundary conditions. So boundary condition is del s y del x is equal to zero, either on the left or on the right. So this is I just give as this equation 33.1. This is 33.2. Okay. So it is I am in the next lecture. Therefore, I am just giving two names. So I don't want to repeat that. So I want to include this one. Now, add, so what I want that in my Taylor series approximation, what I want that at every point, if it is a boundary, at every point I want that this derivative, yeah, at point i, at every point i, this derivative fulfills, this condition fulfills. So, add, 33.1 into 33.2 as a constraint. Yeah. 
and it's a constraint. What does it mean? This implies we want we want uh, to have Neumann boundary condition fulfilled implicitly. Implicitly, while computing del h y del x, yeah. So, while computing the derivative, we want to have that this derivative on the boundary is 0, ok. So, now what do we get that? So, from 32.1, from here what we get that we get, is we had m equations, anyway we have one unknown, we had one m equation, now I am adding this as a constraint means, so if this is del h i by del x is 0 means, so I am having m plus 1 equation. So now this gives me, anyway I have the overdetermined system, just adding one more equation, it does not give any trouble. So then we have instead of m equation in our least square matrix, we have n plus 1 equation. So we have n, m plus 1 equation. So what does it mean? So I have my h i is h i of j is h i plus x i j minus x i h x plus e of h x i j. Then zero is equal to h x. Yeah. So h x means del h by del x. Uh, so del let us let's write del h i by del x here del h i by del x plus now e of j plus 1 yeah here j is equal to 1 to m so e of m plus 1 not j so I have one more unknown so this means I get my system it's so I just write this one on the left so it is h i minus this is equal to this one ok so this is same as before nothing change so this I define as a bj so it means I have my system b1 up to bm yeah so it is I am not going to write again detail But my right hand side is here 0 m plus 1 is equal to now I have dx1 up to dxm then the coefficient here is 0 then my derivative del h by del x plus so I have my error e1 up to em plus 1. Yeah. Now, in order to compute this one, del h by del x, I, we, we minimize f of h del x, I is equal to sum of wj, e j square it is nothing else m a minus b transpose w m a minus b yeah what is our m m is little bit different from the earlier one so now what is our m a minus b so this gives
explicitly del h by del x get i is equal to m transpose w m inverse m transpose w of b. Yeah, we get this exactly on the boundary. So now, what is our m transpose w m? So del x, let us compute del x by del x i is m transpose w m inverse m transpose w of b. What is our m transpose? So our m matrix is dx1 up to dxm 0. So it is the row matrix here dx1, dx2, dxm. 0, the, this is a w, this is a weight, w1 up to wm, so it is m plus 1 by m plus 1 is a, a diagonal matrix, but I want to have the weight exactly 1, yeah, I want to fulfill when I am sitting on the boundary, so I want to have the weight exactly 1, it should exactly fulfill the boundary condition, therefore in the diagonal term I give it 1, m transfer wm, So, M is this matrix. So, dx1 up to dxm of 0. And now, if you just multiply dx1 into dx1 is dx1 square, then you get dx2 square, something like that, and the weight here w of j dx a square. Okay? It is summation. And then finally, 0 times 1, wait, here I have, uh, so here I made a mistake here. So my coefficient is, it should be, here it is 1, so it should be here 1, yeah, not a 0, yeah, otherwise I have no solution. So the coefficient of this one is, this is 0, and the dx1, this is dx1 up to dxm, but the coefficient 1 is this one is 0, okay? And now, here I have my, this is not 0, this is 1, this is 1, yeah? So m plus 1, so 1 times 1 is 1, and the weight is also 1 here, w m plus 1, I want to have 1. So this is my m transpose w m. What is my m transpose w of b? So m transpose w of b is equal to, m transpose is dx1 up to dxm times 1. Again, W1 up to WM and 1. And then the vector here, DX1 up to DXM, or not this one, this is times B. So B is, my right hand side vector is B1 up to BM, and the M plus 1 row is equal to 0. Okay, so this is my m transpose wm. Then here it is just like dx1 into d b1 times wj. So wj dxj bj summation plus 1 times 1 is 1, but it is 0. It is the final term is 0. So now our h del h by del x i is the inverse of this one is this one and this upper part is this one w j dx j b j times w of j dx j square plus 1. So this is the 
derivative on the boundary if the boundary has the Neumann boundary condition. If it is interior, so what I have that this part is there is no one. If it is a boundary, this one. But if there is a boundary condition, non-homogeneous, if this is not equal to zero, then you must have given some value here v. Then I will not have this part zero. So if the value is given some on the right hand side, then I will have one times one times that value. So instead of this one, I would have non-zero value. Then here also non-zero value. So if I compute the derivative, I don't have anything so for the interior point. Nothing. It is only for the boundary point. Okay. Now let us uh, let us uh, look at the numerical implementation on the MATLAB. How it looks like. Next, I example. I I show you the example. The one is a pool, and next I show you the the same boundary condition, but different initial condition as a, a broken dam. Okay. Now let us come back. So I have given the. So in the is considered the example which was a pool. Initially, I have the zero velocity, and uh, so my domain is zero to one here, and I have initially the initial condition, the velocity is zero and the height. So I have given the one plus. So this was uh, the height was one plus not cos, but I have given a little bit up one plus cos pi times x. Divided by two. Then, so then we just start our time uh, integration. It is same as before. I just compute uh, with the. I just compute the here the derivative here, and then once I compute the derivative, then I update a u x u and h. Then once I have that, I am doing now the particle reprojection. So here I apply the boundary condition which is zero for the u, but h we have already given the implicit computation while computing the derivative. Then I do here particle projection. Then here I have done something like a second order, just like a first order derivative here. Now it is second order uh, the moving least square approximation, and then let us see that how we get the the evolution. So initially, I have this wave function, and then it hits to the wall, and it come back. After it hits the wall again, it goes further. Then, if you let it to be run longer, then what you see that initially they are very quiet. Yeah, the wave just disappear. So if you run longer, so then you will have no no wave at all. So if we run a little bit longer time. Let us run up to three. What will happen? So it starts going to that one, then hits the the right wall, and again propagate the wave, then propagate the wave back. So it is uh, just uh, let us run till so time t is equal to three point zero. So it should finally, if you run longer, and then it will stop. Yeah, and I consider the next example. So the next example, I consider the dam break. So here, for example, I had written maybe we gave the the example. So our u zero x was zero h of zero x was one plus half. Cosine pi x, yeah. So this was uh, the initial condition. The example one, the pool. So one, the second one is a dam. So again, initial condition u zero x is zero, and h zero x is equal to one if. Zero less equal to x less equal to zero point two. One if zero point two less than x less equal to one. So same boundary condition as 
in pool. It means that u is zero on the boundary, and then the the h will be the Neumann boundary condition on left and right boundary. Now let us check this situation. So here initially what I have, I have the domain zero to one, here zero point two. So I have I generate so some type of the water here, then it will fall down. So you may not get very accurate sharp, but uh, since it is the diffusive, so I am uh, doing the the upwinding first order. So there is a numerical diffusion. Again, I am doing the reconstruction. There is once more numerical diffusion. So let us take the dam problem. So everything all set up are same, just uh, using the different initial condition. So we have initially this one, then the dam will fall down, then water move to the right, and it hits the right wall, then come back and hits again the left wall, just run for a long time. So the time t final was one, run maybe for t time is equal to 2.0. You just look at here, it goes further, it hits a wall, there is little bit, uh, it's going up on the right wall. So after a certain time, the water should come to its level, yeah? It will not move further. So it's still, yeah, it is still once more run longer, so up to maybe four. If you run quite long time, then your velocity should be zero. Yeah, it's nothing will move. But you may get very small numerical effect, but you should have. So that is, you cannot avoid the numerical error. So you see now, so the velocity is almost, uh, the wave is almost not moving much. Yeah, it is becoming very small and small, it doesn't propagate much. So it is almost, so here you see it has come little bit, but it is, if you run even t is equal to five, so it will be almost flat. So now again, to give the impression that this is a simulation of the, the pool here, the wave generating in the pool, and then it hits to the right wall and then come back, and right, uh, so it is back and forth, and then finally it will remain the constant height. So I think with this uh, example, we stop uh, the reconstruction of particle reconstruction method or particle projection method. Then uh, in the next, uh, we'll have uh, topics that what we have seen that since a reconstruction means we don't use the moving grid, so we are bringing back. Now the question is that why do you use the explicit, why you use the Lagrangian? Yeah, why move again, bring back? So why don't you, we use the Euler in coordinate, not instead of Lagrangian? So in the next lecture, I'll show you that what is the advantage of using the Lagrangian approach, and uh, what is the disadvantage of using the Lagrangian, or, or what is the advantage against the, the classical Euler formulation, yeah? So I will continue in the next lecture, the comparison between Eulerian, it looks like a Eulerian, or a arbitrary Eulerian Lagrangian looks like a Eulerian grid, but we are doing with uh, the moving point, but if we don't move, what will happen, yeah? that we see the comparison or advantage, disadvantage of both method. So I think we, we stop with this particle reconstruction method today. Thank you very much. Wait, uh, so I'm waiting you to see you in the next lecture.